side of red or switch they die. Rob of the dog who loud his motorbike. Looking for legends on the sunset strip. With a stone cold paranormal partnership. That's what time Rick tried to sell me some crack. Listen to the podcast, man, and take that shit back. It's a legends. The podcast of urban legends. And here your host, Neil and Chris. You'll receive our pod in your ears tonight. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Urbane Legends, the podcast which takes a relatively shallow dive into the world of urban legends, mysteries, cryptids, aliens, and all of that Fortean stuff. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Chris Flynn, and with me as always is my co-conspirator, Mr... Neil Herbert. I mean, it is kind of like the paddling pool end of the, the swimming pool, Very isn't it? Urban, urban yeah. mythology, so up to urban mythology, whatever. I'll, I'll I notice um, you're you're using the name Neil Herbert today because um, yeah, so not, you, not, you, not your other name. That's interesting because oh, I yeah, have here. Oh yeah. Oh hello. Yeah. Yeah. I've, exactly. Yeah. I've around a piece of paper like that means something. There's been a lot Deny of everything. There's been a lot of leafleting going on around yeah. Port Slade. And? Yeah, about a new erotic dancer in town who goes by the name of Niall Sherbert. Now, the face, is blurred, like my name. the face is blurred out, fair enough, but let's just say that there are certain... The undeniable silhouette. There are some certain pe- in, individual peculiarities about the physique, yeah. which... Someone who might know people might be able to recognise as being someone else. That's all I'm saying. A lot of vague accusations here, and not a lot of facts. So, are you claiming that you are not? I don't know what you're you're talking about. Niall Sherbert, erotic dancer. I think you're trying to publicise something that you're uh... trying to publicise. If if I, if I, you know, whatever I do off podcast is. That's my that's my business. I don't see why. Yeah, but you you can't blame me for kind of asking you about it. I mean, this, I you know, you've just what, been looking at your your erotic how, dancing and you're just putting two and two together and making fours. How do why do I have to find out this way? Well, I thought that put some you know, cash on the table, you might find out. Are you branching off into new business concerns? Is that what's happening here? I, I deny everything. I'm. I don't feel I have to. Uh, Okay, but let's I mean, this say... This is not the place to bring it up, is it, Chris? Let's be honest. It's, not... it's the only time that we get to speak to each other. Oh, yeah. Because because you apparently are very busy all of a sudden. Yeah. Ever since these leaflets have been... <laughs> a, little, a little side hustle. Yeah, but you... It's making me more... Well, if, if I was doing it, it might make me more... Oh, for a uh, little slip this there. Podcast. I'm ger- Hypothetically, you know. Yeah, hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically, yeah. Hypothetically, what would be the theme of this? Ancient Egypt? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pyramids would be involved, I suspect. Pyramids, that kind of... One of the uh, ones with the little eye at the top. Yeah, doing the kind of Freemasonry. Walk like the Egyptian thing, where you put one hand down below you and one up the top. Yeah, but sort of puppetry in the penis. (laughs) Style. The penis. Wow. So there's a lot of... um, Making a lot of uh, Egyptian characters. A lot of convex glass involved then, presumably. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, lovely. Um... Yeah, no, so uh, I didn't sleep very well last night, Neil, and I'm well, on no the doubt re- after that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I mean, it could be related, um, or it could. So I'm on the Rennies today. The, oh, okay. The, for the acid. The, the heartburn. Yeah, so yesterday I ordered a pizza, or I named the company. Um, uh, okay, but let's just say. Like takeaway. Let's just say it's an American chain. Let's just say it might be named after a game which involves tiles with different numbers on that may or may not be played primarily in uh, West West Indian barbershops. Was it incredibly greasy by any chance? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. 
And I, I think I might up... know the one you're referring to. I've used them in the past. Many yeah. Years ago. That's it, a bad takeaway for There years. may or may not have been a Bonds girl named it. Blimey. <laughs> That's a weird one, isn't it? Some obscure clues here. I believe in Live and Let Die. The voodoo I, one. I do recall that name, but it's it's one of those ones as well, isn't it? It's just absolutely no... Um, I mean, usually, I mean, I mean, obviously the most heinous one was Pussy Galore, but usually there's some sort of, like, st- stupid kind of um, in-joke, isn't there? Whereas in Domino, I think... There's usually some, like, double entendre with the bone gun names, isn't there? Like Mary yeah, Goodnight like... or something like that, or, you know, Hanshan Day or... <laughs> I don't know, that's probably one of them, wouldn't it? Tits Mahosev. <laughs> the thing is, it's one of the Bond films, yeah. It's one of those, I do really enjoy the Bond films. I always go and see the new Bond film. I don't know why, though. I think it's... A, it's I've, not really seen the most re- I've not seen the most recent one. What was the most recent? Oh, I don't know. D- um, Die Again Tomorrow, was that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> see, this is the thing, I can't even remember. Oh, no, it was the last um, Daniel Craig... Yeah, it's a Daniel Craig one where he, uh, you know... He ends up live, live tomorrow, die again, die another day. No, that was the other. That was that the was one, actual one, fella, wasn't it? That was on which it's Madonna present. did the banging soundtrack to the worst. <laughs> one Dr. Worst Freud was. Songs. I quite like the little. Um, there's a little riff in it. I quite like. I quite like the little main melody. I think that's um, that was your man who used to do the. Um, he did the scores and stuff. Not John Barry, but the. I've um, forgotten his name. He did a thing with Bjork, Army of Me, years and years ago. Mm. He's like an electronic musician, but he does yeah. kind of uh, does movie scores and things like that. But yeah, I quite like the little. Anyway, we're going really off piece here. Not the of where we started. <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, just... yeah. So I had a quite bad sleep because of. Um, do you know what? Like I had so much acid that it was coming up, and so I um, I ended up just, just like to get rid of the acid and be able to sleep. I ended up just sticking my fingers down my throat. Well, it's that, or um, you just you know. Yeah, you say Rennies are a good one. But or... I didn't have anything in the house, so it was like, what do I do? Well, it's always worth having a little... I, I've done this before. I've, I don't really get heartburn so much anymore. But I don't sort of do the late night pizza thing too often. But um, no, if you've ever got any like bicarbonate soda or anything like that nah. around, I just literally... I could, it's disgusting, but it's like, you know, just a teaspoonful of that in water and just... Yeah, yeah. But no, look, you see, harsh, I didn't... Better, because better I stopped drinking, I didn't feel like I needed to keep stuff like... That in, <laughs> in the Just house in anymore, case, yeah. but, but apparently so. We use bicarb for different things, like cleaning, and I mean, I'd say baking, because I'm not going to do that. Yeah, what are you baking with bicarbonate soda? Soda breads, lovely Irish soda breads. Mm. Like, the, like Again, that's, hypothetically. Sounds like a kind of thing that an Irish stripper named Niall Sherbert might be into. Yeah, be. <laughs> Irish themed stripper. Um, we come full circle. We come full circle. See that beautiful how it tie, all ties up. You talk enough bollocks, and eventually it does. Yes, so, um, Neil, this week I am going to be uh, leading you by the snout Ooh. through the truffle forest of mystery. I'm not sure you understand how truffle hunting works, but anyway. yeah, you lead the you lead the pig yeah, you lead the pig to the truffle, don't you? And then just stop yeah, then you feed it. them it, yeah, yeah and then you may eat them, and then it, then it yeah, then like you the eat... weasel with the coffee thing, it did it at the other end, and he served yeah. that up. Is that it? Is this by, is by this, a restaurant? Is this why I was kicked off doing truffle hunting during my gap year? Yeah, this is why I'm, you and Marco Pierre White don't talk anymore. That's one of many reasons. Yeah, that, to be fair, that, that, and the, that and the harassment. I won't say who was who in that. In that, no, little... slagging him off about his advertising the old little old uh, well, like North Stock Cubes. Yeah, come on, North Stock Cube. What are you doing, mate? Like I thought you liked to make it lovely. To produce a lot of good flavour. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, and I just put this uh, stock cube in, and it makes my food taste nice. Yeah, come well, on, mate. But I do like the fact that Mark Pierre White has become a real setup. He's really pretentious at the same time. I do, do find him quite fascinating. So he's like, do you? He dresses all weird now as well. Does I don't he? know. He's like what? Of, like, no, he's always got like a funny hat on. I don't know. Is it he's... Always, he's always like JK. <laughs> no, it's, but it's like a sort of shit. What's that? Like a William... I can't really explain it. He'll have like a cloth weird. Like a Robert and Robert... Huh? He'll have. He'll get like a sort of. It looks like he's just like he's toweled down his hair and then just. Well, like kind know. of like like English people on the beach, like English granddads on the beach I can't in really comics, explain it. where it's, it's like a hanky with knots tied in the corner. It's almost that kind of thing, yeah. But you know, like a longer thing. It's like where you where you might like you know if you you know if you're sort of like somewhere very warm, you might wear some sort of headgear. 
but then mm. so, you know so you can wrap it around and things like that and you've, you've got it for um you know to protect you from the sun but he'll, he'll just be wearing it on a youtube video he likes are you suggesting that he's joined isis <laughs> i mean it's entirely possible he, he is the punk rock original punk rock chef isn't he is he? He punk, punched Gordon Ramsay once when he was working for him. Yeah. He punched Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. That's how hard he is. He's even harder <laughs> than Gordon Ramsay. Oh, you know? oh, <laughs> those chefs hell. are pretty tasty, aren't they? Well, Again, that's another I'd hilarious. I'd hate to see thing. those two try and fight their way out of a paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've both just gone to sleep. Um, I don't know. They could be on the undercard for um, Musk and what's his face, couldn't they? Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah. No, that's no, boring, isn't it? It's all boring. Oh, Lots yeah. a bit boring at the moment. <laughs> um, I don't know, two billionaires want to keep the shit out of each other, I don't mind. Remind yeah, no, I'm fine with it. Like, good luck. I mean, yeah. hope, hopefully they'll both die in the ring, but... Uh... <laughs> you never know. Good, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, It'd make it a spectacle. they both die of hubris. Um, so, this week... This is quite a famous one that it appears to be, but I'm yeah, okay. I'm not aware of it. And so this week I'm going to introduce to you for your delectation. Ooh, and for the, you, Lister. No, not for them. Oh, okay. I it's want just them to me. switch just to, yeah, yeah, to you switch. No one else is allowed to listen now. So yeah, just fast forward. I to be honest with you, I don't know why we're releasing it, but that's you know, that's on us. But fast forward straight to the scores. Yeah. <laughs> so it is the story of uh Indrid. Cold, also known as the Smiling Man, and that's I N D R I D Indrid, not Ingrid. Indrid Cold. Mm. Mm. So, um, first of all, I'm going to go through a summary and a description, and one of these kind of top trump card things <laughs> that you get. And then I'm going to go through. Uh, so, there's been three sightings, and I'm going to read through those accounts okay see what you think uh neil I, so i should smile in manner don't see how bad it can be oh, you've got a spooky smile yeah like when you smile yeah that's that is pretty, pretty artificial that's, isn't it that's haunting yeah it's just like show some teeth just bear some teeth that's, that's friendly yeah <laughs> yeah often... that's my theory yeah i think i feel like I'm... I feel like something's walking through my soul when you smile and hold eye contact. Um, Ooh, well. It's got slight, might might have or does have a relationship to someone who we're going to talk about one day, the Mothman. Oh, okay. Oh, I think I've heard. That's where I know this name from. I have mm. heard of this person, yeah. Yeah, he's involved in the Mothman mystery, isn't he? Yeah, no, I haven't. He's in the film The Mothman Prophecy, apparently. Yeah, he's a character in that, and he's um, yeah, yeah, he's played Ooh. by Jim Belushi, probably. So, Indrid Cole, commonly known as a Smiling Man, is an allegedly humanoid entity. The nickname comes from the being's tendency to smile at almost everyone that encounters him. Could just be good at customer service. Yeah. It is said just friendly. It is said that he still visits West Virginia to this day. Mm, if it's said. So, uh, I'll give you... Not to say who buy. No. Nah. Uh, so, back, so here's the background. That's a great thing with Urban Legends, isn't it? This the fact-checking. It's just something you need to... No, it's, it, it says. Well, West Virginia is, like, really kind of... Um, no offence to anyone in West Virginia, but I understand that it's quite rural. Wink, wink. Yeah, I think of it very much for, like, growing tobacco. It's very, it's very Appalachian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And coal mining, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's coal mining and and yeah. Appalachia. Or, or, is, yeah, it's, you know, probably not so much anymore. But uh, I yeah. don't, know. don't know really. So here's here's like here's the here's the um, here's the headlines. Probably some good bluegrass music, Chris. Mm, and shine. Oh yeah, I bet the shine's good. Oh, lovely shine. Oh, straight out of the Oh, need some Rennies after a bit of shine, tell you that much. Bet you would. Mm -hmm. All the poison had put in it, seeing you as an outsider. Uh, so, type, alien. So it's an alien now. Fair enough. Oh, okay, straight off the bat then. First sighting, 1966. 
course, when football came home. Yes. <laughs> that's probably why we didn't hear about it. Um, that's what happens when England win, win, win a World Cup. It's yeah, an some, alien comes down Some evil Virginia. entity manifests itself. Sounds about right. Well, it was said that Alf Ramsey was heavily involved in the occult, wasn't it? Yeah. He so, was one of the Freemasons at the time, so... Yeah, he was. Uh, he was part of... Uh, he's been Prince heavily in, heavily implicated in Operation Pitchfork, as I say, where MI, yeah. MI6 uh, uh, have certain contracts with uh, demonic entities. You don't know what happens to Pickles the dog? <laughs> well, part Pickles, of that talks Pickles, about. Pickles the hell Pickles hound. the dog? Yeah. <laughs> Pickles, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, a Cerberus. Uh, last sighting, unknown. Country, sighted in the USA, that probably does not live there if it's an alien. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it's not his home country, presumably, yeah. But, you know, bring me your tired, your pool. <laughs> it's <laughs> green. Warriors. <laughs> you get acid spitters. Yeah. And that could have been me. After my well, uh, apparently on, after your Domino's on, pizza. Oh, sorry, oh, I was what? supposed to be saying that. <laughs> well, I never said that. Why are you saying that? Yes, I like how you're unafraid to just completely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, like, just slander? Just slander? Just slander? Kind constantly. of like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the pizza chain has to them. Like, let's keep <laughs> this one hush hush. I'm off some really obvious clues. Yeah, I mean, but that that was you with a bit of Bond's knowledge. There in, uh, or a bit of, um, or, you know, or the, or the TV show Desmond's. Desmond's, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good. Was good. Um, Habitat, possibly the planet Lenulos, Ganymedes Galaxy. So where are getting that from? No, I haven't. I oh, keep meaning to go, Chris, but you know what it's like. You didn't go there, like when you went on your diamond smuggling urethra trip. No, you? I didn't. Didn't. Didn't have the time. It was really? Like when, we, when we went to Mykonos, and, and I, I missed that trip to Delos. So mm. yeah, I was doing another cash machine alter, altercation stopped me from being able to uh, <laughs> make the trip to the intergalactic <laughs> trip. So possible population of a guess of the habitat. So that's weird. <laughs> Possible population, singular, though. In it's, just, it's, just, it's, like a, it's just like a one bedroom flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bed set. Yeah, it's planet. It's, it's just like got a really, it's got a really shit lean to. Yeah. <laughs> just in the just one a, just a rock bit. with a lean to. <laughs> a calendar. I better go. I've got a really big TV. I better go and see Hugh Man now. Yeah. They win England win World Cup. Oh, come to travel. <laughs> Something is wrong in the ether. <laughs> <laughs> the planets are in flux. Um, possible population singular. The Indrid cold species population would likely be very high, based on fuck all. Makes no sense at all, but fair enough. Well, they're unlikely that. It's unlikely that it's a population of one, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, you would think, well, yeah, you know, you'd think a planet of one person would be a bit odd, but I mean, who, who knows? Uh, I dream of the day when Mars is a planet of one person and that person's Elon Musk. <laughs> you, if you think that wouldn't stop you from hearing his thoughts and whatever, you're having a laugh. Anyway, he'd, he'd rebrand it X, wouldn't he? Planet, yeah, Planet, yeah, X, planet which X, would, X now. which would be all weird because that's what, another um, mystery which we're going to look at at some point. The Planet X or Ooh. Nubaru, I think it's called, which is the mysterious, pla- <laughs> just the mysterious posited extra planet in the solar system, which we which Earth never sees because it's uh, always at the opposite side of the sun. Oh, okay, that's I'm sure that makes a great deal of sense. Look forward to that. Yeah. It's yeah, because the it's flat, Chris. That's why. That's what makes sense. Yeah, and it's under. It's one of the proofs. It's on the flip side. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. actually, you know, bother looking into anything, if you've done you any, got if you've bothered doing any research, well, just getting spoon fed lies. Well, <laughs> as long as the <laughs> lies tamper down the acid, then I'm quite happy to eat them. Fair enough. I had enough uh, four different types of sausage truth last night, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it was called uh, from this unnamed pizza chain. It was called the yeah. abs, the absolute banger. 
the pizza what? because in the UK, uh, sausages are sometimes colloquially called bangers because unless you print yeah. them, they used to uh, pop in the pan because yeah, of the argue. high fat content. <laughs> That's why we constantly talk about bangers and mash. You know, I mean, it's one of those things, yeah, it is a phrase, but you don't really use it anymore, do you? No. It's all going to have a plate of bangers and mash. <laughs> you, said, you, said, you said that literally just before we started recording. Well, yeah. And you're currently eating a plate of bangers and mash. Well, yeah, I'm having a, having a slap up nail. <laughs> a slap up nosh. Be no style slap up nosh, yes. <laughs> to celebrate uh, knocking a policeman's hat off with a snowball. Yeah. I didn't get I'm going to have a slap a up Sunday. bangers and mash. Uh, right, so description. So we're 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 um we're not very uh task focused are we? No, not really. I'm, That's this, good. Is, this is more this is more just a hey know, it's a, hey the vital it's... stats of a fictional character rather than an urban legend. But anyway. So description. Right. Smiling. Get your head, get your head in the game. Man yeah. smiling, yeah. alien, many or few. Uh the grinning man is reported to be human like. In appearance, though he is commonly associated with UFO activity and is sometimes believed to be an alien. Well, it is already also... established he definitely was. Mm. Okay. So we we, we downgraded that to maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fine. Sorry, I didn't I wasn't in touch with the person who wrote the first paragraph. Yeah, no, we we that says we, the man who wrote the the person who wrote the second paragraph. No, we yeah, we get people to do the, write different parts of the article yeah. without any yeah, you know. without any chatting. We've got time for that. Look, this is, look, this is cryptid.fandom.com, so it's gonna have different contributors. Yeah. Like any wiki. Fair enough. Uh it is also to believe possible uh it's also believed to be possible that he's connected with the men in black. In his first sighting, he was described as being over six feet tall and wearing a reflective green suit with a black belt. So he's pretty handy. He had a dark complexion and small beady eyes set far apart. (laughs) In his second known encounter, his suit was said to be blue instead of green. But similar, aren't they, blue and green? They certainly are. Oh, but it might it's, just be a trick of the light as well. Exactly. But it still retained its reflective property. Other than that, he was described as looking perfectly natural with slick back hair, a coat with the top two button, top two buttons unbuttoned. All right, I'm liking this guy. Nice. And having pants high pants lighter than the coat but still the same material so it sounds it sounds like he's maybe a member of duran duran or something at the moment. yeah i mean two buttons is just kind of like you know ready to party i mean three you just look far too thirsty as the kids say but looking a bit desperate you've got three buttons undone but two you know so you've got enough to show that you've you've got chest hair got it going on got your chest hair you could show off your little st christopher's medal <laughs> oh yes got, nice got buried amongst their uh slick back hair very nice, yep. timeless. Uh, I wonder if he used brill cream. Maybe we'll find out. It's only possible. He was also described as being quite tan, though not dark, and looking like any normal human being. According to reports made by Woodrow Derrickberg... Not a lot of reports of him smiling, for a smiling man, but anyway. We'll get on to the reports, Neil. We'll get on to the Then reports. we saw him in a comedy club, and he was great. <laughs> That's oh, how tickling him. Yeah. So, according to reports by Woodrow Derenberger, who's the most famous, but is going to be our second uh, sighting. Okay. Thing, uh, Indrid Cold came from a planet named Lanulos in the Ganymedes galaxy, and there were two other grinning men by the names of Demo Hassan and Carl Ardo. Oh, these yeah, do sound like bad Star Wars. <laughs> a little bit, hey. Uh, right, so we'll go on to... Mind you which came first. Well, this did. Yeah, there you go. Lucas ripping it off yet again. Yep. Uh, right. Where was I going to start? Right, so I'm going to start here from the Daily Yonder. Keep it rural. 
mm, okay. daily on the dock. I'll try to daily. I, mean, I live in a I live in a city, so that might be difficult, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, but you can keep it. You keep it rural, and uh, you've got yeah. a garden. You could plant... sleep in a plant pot. <laughs> That'd be a start. <laughs> yes, sleep in a plant pot, like yeah. everyone in the country does. I'm sure they do. You got that city mouth, boy. You don't know. We don't happens. all sleep in plant pots. We sleep in stables. Exactly. I do. Uh-huh. So, local you don't have shine. You'll sleep in a plant pot. Don't worry about it. I mean, you wouldn't fit in a plant pot. As in the size of the pot. Because you got the that city body, boy. Yeah. You too big. Uh right. So Right, where was I going to start? Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, the first sighting. Right, that's a good place to start. Yeah, and this is from, sorry, this is, I'm jumping around a bit here. This is from jmplumley.com. Okay. And it's by JM Plumley. Oh, well, there you go. That's what it says on the tin. Rin and bear it. Indrid cold. It was October. Uh, 1966, around 9.45 p.m. Two boys, Martin, Martin Munov and James Jan Chittis, were walking home along a chain-link fence below the elevated New Jersey Turnpike. Okay, he's in Jersey now. Hmm. On the other side of the fence lay some shrub bush and a steep, nigh-insurmountable slope up to the road. It wasn't until they stopped to rest that Jan Chittis noticed someone standing over there, staring through the links at the house opposite. The stranger's green suit reflected subtly in the streetlights. He was the strangest guy we've ever seen, Jan Chittis would later recount. He was standing behind that fence. I don't know how he got there. He was the biggest man I ever saw. Six foot. (laughs) <laughs> um, Yanisichis uh, urged Munov, whose back was to the band, to turn around to look. Jimmy nudged me and said, who's that guy standing behind you? I looked around and there he was, behind the fence, just staring there. He pivoted around and looked right at us. Then he grinned a big old grin. The two boys ran like mad. Later, their accounts to both police and John Keel, paranormal investigator and the author of the Mothman prophecies, mm. would be identical. The man on the other side of the fence was over six foot two and broad in the chest with a black belt, beady eyes, and a smile to make your blood run cold. The legend of the grinning man had begun. So that's 66, presumably. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. It's a slightly dodgily dressed chap. Yeah. Grinning yeah, looking at a chain staring, fence. Staring at some house. Not the most haunting encounter I've ever come across, but there you go. Um, well, I get it. Yeah, okay, the vibe of the situation, whatever I'm seen in. Yeah, so at the moment, so, at the moment, so not very paranormal, I would say. Yeah. Just a weird guy. Yeah. In some rather sharp... Uh, rather, rather a sharp suit. Yeah, if he was on stage with, like, um, you know... Parliament. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. be fine. That would be perfect couture. Mm-hmm. So uh, now we're going to move on to... So I'm going to... Um, so there's... A, so it's got some of his... What the, what the guy said on the site, which I was just on, and some of it's okay. on this uh, Daily Yonder. And it's by Liz Carey. Um, local law Woodrow Derenberger and the legend of Indrid Colt. An unsettling encounter on the road in West Virginia was the beginning of a rural legend and a personal tragedy for the man involved. Ooh. So, so this one's a bit more. Uh, she, she's Expensive. put a bit more of her own. She put a bit more of her own flourish into it. Oh, okay. So, things always seem mysterious on a chilly fall night in the country. For Woodrow Derenberger, 
his mysterious encounter with an almost human grinning man on the back roads of West Virginia one night would affect him and his family for almost quarter of a century. In 1966, Woodrow Derenberger was a sewing machine salesman living in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. One November night that year, Derenberger said he was returning from a business trip to Marietta, Ohio, when he had to stop to adjust a sewing machine at the back of his truck. Well, it'll happen. It'll happen. You never know, somebody might want it to sell. Got to get that adjusted. Yeah. Would you reckon it was just like bouncing around? That was out of control, yeah. Once he got back on the road, he noticed light ahead of him. Thinking the lights were police officers, he stopped, only to discover that the lights didn't belong to a car, but what he said was an aircraft that looked like a kerosene lamp chimney. Derenberger said a man stepped out and approached his truck. He looked perfectly natural and was as normal as any human being, Derenberger told uh, Ronald Maines during an interview on WTAP TV in Parks, uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia, the day after the encounter. His face looked like he had a good tan, a deep suntan. He was not too dark, but it was just like he'd been out in the sun a lot and he had a good tan. He's quite into the tan stuff. His hair I was mean, I think of... there's possibly some <laughs> racial subtext going on here, but let's not delve into that. <laughs> like a, he just had a good tan. He didn't look like a, like a, you know. I don't. Yeah, I'm not, not. I'm not saying he was a Guido. But. Yeah, I'm, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I may well be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah, I think you are. I, I, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Although West Virginia, I don't know. It was the sixties. So. Yeah. Uh, his hair was combed straight back, and it was a dark brown. And he seemed to have good thick head of hair. His eyebrows, his face, and his features were very normal. I don't believe that he looked any different from any other man you would meet on the street. So he's really hammering home that he's just a normal just towned a man. Just happens to have a town. Probably been on holiday. But he wasn't normal. Virginia's quite normal, isn't it? I imagine they get... Yeah, I would think so. Where it is, in the... yeah, I would imagine it's quite sunny in the summer. Anyway, well... But he wasn't normal, Darren Berger said. He had a large grin and kept his arms folded with his hands up under his armpits. <laughs> and, although he sp- and although he spoke to Derenberger, his smile never moved. He spoke, Derenberger said, telepathically. Maybe he's like a really shitty ventriloquist Hello. That entertainer. Hi. Yeah, but you yeah. hold your window down. No, I don't care when you're at it. <laughs> Got a little gear. Uh, he asked me to roll down the window on my right-hand side of my truck, and I'd done what he asked, Derenberger said during the interview. And this man stood there, and he asked me what I was called, and I know uh, he meant my name. And I told him my name, and he asked me, he said, why are you frightened, he said. Don't be frightened. We wish you no harm. He said, we mean you no harm. We wish you only happiness, human. Why is human scare? (laughs) What is love, human? And I told him my name. And when I told him my name, he said uh, he was called cold. (laughs) Uh. It was Derenberger's and the world's introduction to the entity known as Ingrid Colt. So I've got some more stuff from the interview here. So how do we know that the New Jersey one is related to this one? Same as He wasn't grinning, was he? Yeah. No, was he? Oh, okay. I forgot that bit. Fucking hell. Pretty much his only feature. Yeah. So here's some more from the interview. I mean, that one does sound more weird. He's, you know, stepped out of a kerosene lamp. <laughs> He's got his, his hands up, he's like, oh, I'm He sounds like a crappy children's entertainer to me, but yeah. Or just like a really, like an old school consultant who like, yeah. crosses, like right, uh, anyone got any questions? Yeah. I'm human, honest. <laughs> it's like you man. guys. Yeah. Uh, right, so here's some more from the interview. He asked me what the city of Parks, uh, what the city of Parksburg, he pointed to the light, he asked me, what's the city of Parsburg? <laughs> this is what it says. He pointed to the light. 
he didn't point but give the impression that he was pointing. <laughs> and he asked me what that was called, and I told him it was Parksburg. It was a city, a town. And he asked me if all the people lived in this city or town. <laughs> and I explained to him that it was a place of business. <laughs> it's like, like an alien meeting Richie Sunak. Uh, <laughs> it's where we transacted our business, but people lived in the communities, outlying communities, most of the people. And again, he told me not to be frightened, which I was. <laughs> yeah. I was very frightened, and as far as I could understand, this was all mental. There was no spoken words from him. I knew what he was asking me, but yet he stood there and his mouth did not move. He had a smile on his face. He appeared very courteous and friendly, and after I talked with him for a while, he told me, he said, we will see you again. Derenberg What's with the we? That's me. Oh. Derenberger sat stunned as the man climbed back into his vehicle, the kerosene lamp thing, yeah. and flew away. When he finally got home to his wife, he was shaking so badly that she was the one who had to call the police. Mm. <laughs> What's he like? <laughs> when asked later whether he believed if cold would really come back again, De Derenberger replied, well, I did believe it, but now I don't know how to answer in all honesty because I'm afraid that he will. And I don't want him to, but I have a feeling that he will. A feeling. So, naturally, Derenberg reported his encounter to the Parksburg police. Well, by the next, you. well yeah, of course. By the next day... They've got a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's like, you're trying to get a sort of police to deal with something in the UK. It's like... You know, my house been broken into. I was, you know, we'll send someone around. Here's, here's, here's a crime. Here's a crime number. Yeah, here's a crime number, just, dickhead. Yeah, good luck with that. You actually <laughs> TTFN. Just, just met a weird, weird geezer. I think he's an alien. You know, well, disarming grin. Yeah, but I mean, the sheriff in rural West Virginia, you would imagine, yeah. would just be the person with the most guns. Yeah, oh, mind you, oh blimey, that'd be a, that'd be a competition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, naturally, Derenberger reported his encounter to the Parksburg police. By the next day, the media frenzy surrounding the story took off. Derenberger agreed to be interviewed live on television on WTAP. Um, so, this is, so you can actually find this interview on YouTube. So it, it still, still exists. I imagine it's good fun. Yeah. I mean, he's quite difficult to understand written, so maybe he's got quite a, a, a thick voice. I don't know. Um, so taking part in the interview were members of the state police, representative of the Woods County Airport, the Parks, uh, Parkersburg Police, and a representative from the, the Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which we've all heard of. I mean, I suppose you're in that period of, like, um, Cold War paranoia and stuff. Yeah, so I mean, I suppose and you know, Roswell was so only ten years yeah. before, whatever. Uh, so the Wright Patterson Air Force Base uh, in Dayton, Ohio. So I've heard of this Air Force Base a lot, and I can't, I don't know why really. Know. Why would I know about Air Force bases? <laughs> I'm not a spy, am I? <laughs> no. So for thirty minutes, the men not an alien. No way, Neil. Uh, so, for 30 minutes, the men peppered Derensburg with questions about the strange encounter. After the interview aired, however, others came forward with claims that they had also seen a figure matching Derenberger's description of uh, Indrid Cold. Oh, there you go, the case closed. It's clearly true. Yep. They instantly laid down their arms and <laughs> submitted. Yeah, well, you might, you know... One man reported that a man matching Indrid Cole's description had tried to flag him down, but he was too afraid to stop. Other people claimed to see lights and fluttering vehicles on the road. Derenberger said he talked. Uh, Derenberger said he talked to Cold on. Don't know what that means. Um, oh, on the road, Derenberger said he had talked to Cold on. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and several witnesses reported they had seen Derenberger stopped on the road talking to the man. 
For the next three weeks, newspapers in the area ran stories about Derenberger's claims and the claims of others. News coverage eventually died down, but Cold's visitations continued. Mm. Derenberger's uh, reported he was visited often by the strange grinning man over the course of the next month. Eventually, Derenberger's family said they too had seen Cold and other strange things. Okay, so he keeps bumping into him. Well, he keeps turning up. Yeah. He's got a few more questions. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's... It doesn't say what, what he said when he when he revisited. It's a bit like one of those... What the, <laughs> what the grinning man reminds you of is, you know, like, if you're out in a pub or something mm. and there's someone who's, like, a bit of a lost individual, yeah, and they're probably they drink, a chat. They're probably drinking on their own, yeah, and they want a bit of a chat, and then they sort of invite themselves to come and sit with you and your friends, and they kind of start, it, it essentially ruins your night for a bit. <laughs> it kind of reminds you a bit of that. Yeah, you do like a half hour penance, then make an excuse and move on, don't you? Mm. But I think this is one of those ones as well where you sort of open it up to something, and then it's suddenly like something deeply inappropriate gets aired, and it's kind of yeah. like, oh, that's that's unfortunate. And it always does. Yeah, and there's always generally. a reason the person's on the road. Yeah. Um, so, naturally, the media attention given to the story brought locals to Derenberger's house, hoping to catch a glimpse of the cold. The attention, as well as the scorn and ridicule he was suffering from, led Derenberger to seek medical attention. His physician gave him a clean bill of health and found no evidence of chemical imbalance or disruption. There you go. Although he wrote a book about his visits, nothing good came from Derenberger recounting uh, his encounter. In fact, it didn't just negatively affect him, but it affected his family and friends as well. The family received years of harassing phone calls and blamed lost jobs and friends on Derenberger's tales of Indrid Cold. Not very strong friendships then. I was going to say, it's like, I might think that somebody's making it up. I don't know that I'd be particularly, like, peeved about it. You know so I mean? if, I was, if I was, like, really, if I was saying to you, like, and I was, I was really fucking, look, I did see this. Yeah, yeah. Right. On it, yeah, honestly. And you might think, well, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Like, maybe it was, you know. Well, I'd whatever. think that somebody can believe would, that they've seen something. They may or may not have done, you know. Yeah, but would it... Would you? Would, I mean, I mean, obviously yes. But would you yeah. cut ties with me? Yeah, oh, yeah instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Looking yeah. for that reason for Just a while. For no, no, I wouldn't. Because it's even if it's kind of like um, something I like, fundamentally unless it was the have, only thing you talked about. Oh yeah, no. If it then became like your your story, you know, whatever. Did I ever tell you about the time? <laughs> guess <laughs> guess it's just been around my house again. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about someone else. Yeah, I mean, it's be, it could end up being boring, couldn't it? But now I, no, I don't. Yeah, even if it's like somebody made up something that you fundamentally didn't. But, because the thing is, as well, it's like you wouldn't necessarily. It could be like somebody's had a nervous breakdown or yeah, or whatever. I don't know, or hallucinated or. I, I mean, you don't, I mean, yeah, okay. This doctor's checked him out and said, "Always, oh, he seems chemically balanced or whatever." I don't think you can. You know, you, you can't. Yeah, I don't know what, what may or may not have happened. But yeah, you know, we'd be prepared to believe that he believed it. Um, whatever this is, but it's not. Yeah, I don't know. Other so, aspects, this one is, is straight up pretty spooky. The fact that it came out of a UFO didn't say UFO. Just said. Well, well I lamp. mean, it's, there was a flying yeah. kerosene lamp. Yeah, that is weird. Whatever we <laughs> could, could just be um, secret US military yeah, so. kerosene lamp tests. Couldn't it? The most newfangled Russian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, right, I'm gonna go back to this one. So, uh, so Cold interacted with uh, Derenberger's wife. Apparently, he received he revealed his first name was Indrid, and that it was from another dimension, not unlike our own. And he took Derenberger away for days at a time. I mean, it sounds like an excellent cover story for a drug problem. Yeah. Well, this is the other thing as well. Yeah, we go, oh, I got lost for four days. It was a year. <laughs> mm, did you know? <laughs> did you know? 
Yeah, well, you did you happen to be in a happen to be in a different dimension, full of looking full at his of, brain dogs. He should be looking full of shrub, shrubs and heroin. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so, meanwhile, all the business with the Mothman was going on just down the road. The daughter of a family plagued by floating lights woke to find a broad, six-foot-tall man grinning over her bed. A strange man with a bowl haircut and unnerving eyes harassed a local reporter trying to get more information about the people who were reporting in droves hovering lights in the sky. An identically described man visited the homes of several others, uh, of several of those people claiming to be a reporter from Cambridge, Ohio, though he had no idea where Columbus, Ohio, just a few miles down the road from Cambridge, was. So uh, he's he's been he was like pretending to be a reporter as well. Who? The Ingrid 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 possibly Cole. yeah or some or some it's other quite to similar similar one. So, so he's he tangentially went, related to the old moth. Did, did we ever cover the moth man? No, we well, we've done it tangentially a few times, haven't we? But yeah, things related to it. It's so, one of the most boring. So the ensuing media blitz and harassment calls eventually caused his wife to divorce him. She had said from the beginning that Cold's agenda was an evil one. Satan, that's who it is. It's not an alien. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, uh, Derenberger suffered from painful headaches and depression, and eventually uh, he moved away from the area to escape his notoriety. After years of living somewhere else, however, Derenberger moved back to the Mineral Wells area before his death in 1990 at the age of 74, 23 years after the injured cold supposedly pulled him over on the highway. While he never recanted his statement, he never spoke of it either again. <laughs> Since then, Derenberger's account has lingered, propelled injured cold... There's a few people who've made up some stories they can't let go of. That too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the story that you're not an Irish themed erotic dancer mm. called Niall Sherbert. Um, propelling Indrid Cold into the realm of rural myths and legend, as well as tales of creepy and unknown. After Derenberger spoke to John Keel, the author of The Mothman Prophecies, the legend of Indrid Cold was linked to the Mothman, even so far as appearing in the 2002 Mothman Prophecies film. Okay, so I, I assume they were like properly linked, but sounds like he was just used as a character in the film. So what it sounds like to me is that the family which had seen the Mothman and stuff also saw an Indrid Cold. Yeah, an Indrid Cold okay. character. Indrid Cold. And it was literally down like a few miles down the road. Uh, so okay. There's a lot of activity going on. Mm. Busy, well, like, very busy time. He's got a kerosene lamp. He can fly around and he can. Yeah. Exactly. It's like two minutes, two minutes out of road, isn't it? New kerosene lamp. You keep saying this. You know, you've got to do this in Brighton. You've got to bring back trams and kerosene lamp and tuk -tuk transportation. <laughs> yeah. Tuk tuks, kerosene lamps, yeah. lamps and trams. Get them tuk tuks like in London where they, you know, charge you 300 quid to take you two minutes down the road. <laughs> well, um, we imagine, had them, didn't we? We had them for a while. Yeah, in Brighton, imagine but, though, we did have tuk tuks for about five minutes, didn't we? But the, um, the we get fined out of oblivion or something. The cab lobby. Oh, got rid of them. Yes, yeah. the hackney cabs. Yeah, because I assume they were like reasonably. Pro Mind you, if they were doing the same thing they're doing up in London, they could fuck off. But um, yeah, no, I think fair play if they were just you know charging normal. But I was reading something something about this. Apparently, it's just because it's not regulated at all. Like, there's a lot of honest ones, but then you, you don't know who you because there's no regulation or whatever. You don't know. I mean, the good thing about sure. that is if someone very, very much like when I was in uh, Egypt and. Um, they went, oh, like, do you want to have a pic? I was in Sharm El Sheikh. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, do you want to have a picture on the camel? And I was with my ex partner. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay, all right, fine. And um, that'd be three hundred quid. Yeah, it, it was like he was not trying to charge like three hundred quid, and I was like, mm, no, not paying, say, not paying that. And uh, they go, no, you have to pay it. And I went, no, I don't. Yeah. I, said, I didn't, much I didn't shake. Response. I didn't shake hands or anything. Didn't agree on a price. I went. You can have twenty quid, like, and that's still which is too, far much, too much. Yeah. Which is still too much. And they're going, ah, like, and they all sort of gang up on me. And I was like, mate, like, I'm not paying you. Like, you could take this off. You can take fuck all. 
Yeah. Like, it's just like, really, this is why I couldn't live in a country with bartering, because it's horrible, because oh, I just yeah. like to know what something costs. What's there. So, but they assume you, you did, have did loads he, of I pump. assume he took the 20 quid eventually. Mm-hmm. We didn't yeah. have an option. What was he going to do? Well, no, no, I, I was wondering whether you ended up just walking away and giving him nothing. But no, yeah, I, just, like, to, I just pushed pretending it Pretending to be scrubbed, because he was probably quite, quite pleased with the 20 quid to give to him. No, because the thing is, right, there is a lot of quite wealthy Russians, uh, and this was when Russia was doing well. Yeah. And so they were, like, throwing money around, like, so it, the prices were quite extortionate, because they, that's like, Egypt and Turkey is kind of holiday where Russians go on holiday. It's the thing as well, I always reflexively say no to any of these things, and I sometimes feel a bit bad, but if it's like somebody who's like, I think it was in Barcelona and some geezer was like, oh, I do cut out things, and yeah. you, like your silhouette and stuff. Do you uh, is and that where you got the thing for your um, leaf, for your pamphlet, which you've been sending around? <laughs> well, obviously not, because I said no. But no, again, it's one of those ones where they've done it, and then come up and it's like, oh, here's one thing I've done of you, and then it's like, no, I don't, I think you didn't ask for that. So yeah. To the, the next table and start taking the piss out of me. Like, yeah. Don't care, mate. You're not going you know, to humiliate me into giving you money. You're better people than you've tried. <laughs> better than you, for less. Yeah. <laughs> no, but again, it's, it's reflex of it. I'm like, because, you know, if it's just like. I actually like being humiliated. Right, you're, th- yeah. you're, threat- you're threatening me with a good time here. Yeah. I'll, get off, I'll get off on this. Yeah. This is my king. Yeah. This is brilliant. Public shame, me. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. More, please. Bring it on. <laughs> Drop it better. Put some high heels on while you're at it. <laughs> Teacher, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you to stamp on my yeah. balls. So. So I'll tell you what, yeah. you, want to, you want to start earning. You want to start earning. You want to start earning. Let's talk, yeah. let's talk about little, some parameters. You want to start learning. I've got a little list here that I keep in my yeah. wallet of stuff that I will pay for. Oh, I can supply some of the more ultra materials. <laughs> God, I'm in a go bag. I'm, I'm, I'm don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You don't have to source anything. Yeah. I carry it at all times. Um, you never know what life's going to throw at you. So, um, yeah, yeah. You, but the thing is, it's kind of like you... Luck is where preparation meets opportunity, Chris. But you know what, That's right? What <laughs> um, but, it's what, but it wasn't like they took a picture and then like, we were buying a picture. It was like they took a picture on our fucking phone. Like, it's like, how's that... How's that oh, well, seriously, that they, they sort yeah. of take a picture of you and they used your phone? Yeah. And then it's like, that'll be 300 quid. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, like, do you know what? I, I mean, yeah, no, so I'm, I'd assumed he had a camera here and then tried no, to make no, no, it. No. like, oh, I'm an artist or some bu- bullshit like no, that. No, no, no. Took a picture on our phone. Yeah. Because I've, I've heard another one as well where it's like, um, you know, where somebody like wants to take a picture of somebody in a sort of scenery and then they'll kind of like, Actually, we charge money for that. Um, mm. you know, no, no. Which, which, to an extent, kind of fair enough. It's kind of like, but yeah, it's, it's the whole 300 quid thing, isn't it? Because you say it's kind of like, yeah, all 200 yeah, quid just to take a picture of you on your own phone. Yeah. Well, on a camel as well. Like, yeah. off, camels, obviously. I mean, I don't know how much oh, a camel was, costs. Oh, they, they, um, they supply well, the camel as well, don't they? No, we have to bring our own camel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 no, no. Okay, right. So when you started this story, I thought you were. Like you, you're already on a camel trip or something. Like no, that. no, 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 no. There was a camel. You know, you're in the... and you'll you'll go yeah, you'll yeah. go into some place and then someone will die on your camel. Yeah. No, you. So you often get this where you go to like a I don't know you'll go to some some a tourist attraction. Yeah. And then at the gate or at the start of the end. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll take it. a photo yeah, yeah. of you. And then at the end, you know, usually they take a photo at the start. It's like, oh, yeah, with a mascot or something. No, it was their end, camel like, oh, as well. Look at that photo we took of you, and it'd be you know that'll be you no, know, it was their camel. Twenty five ninety nine or whatever. It's like, well, no, it was their camel, but I also happen to know that a camel doesn't cost 300 quid a day to, to run. Okay, so that's 20 quid's a bit better. Yeah, the fact that they don't bring their own cameras, but yeah, okay, so they supply a camel, that's something. Okay, so. Yeah, like, I mean, it's still more than I would have paid, like, than I wanted to pay. I probably I don't, know no, if no, I would, but that... don't know if I would have done it if I'd known it had been 20 quid. Do you know what I mean? I was thinking, yeah. like, a couple of quid, it's fine, isn't it? Like, to, you sit on a camel, camel stands up, take a picture. Camel sits down, get off for yeah. quid, please. Yeah. yeah, no, that's uh Well I imagine that some people just pay it. Some naive people will just like who've got... got more money than sense or just out of a yeah, sense of um but well that's the thing is like with the whole tuk tuk thing is and again I'd agree a price up front. Yeah. But if you then change that on I and mean, it's like no, that'll be three hundred quid, it's like no, that won't be to be honest with you. All the no. book, see what happens. No, and yeah, man, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which would be my advice to any tourist in London if someone, you know, they're ripping you off. So tell them to fuck off. Yeah. 
Pay them nothing. Yeah, well, yeah, because what are they going to do? Like beat you up? No. Uh, call the uh, be, call the police. Call the police they're, 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 good luck they're with that. Done. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just um, yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of advice for our listeners there. Uh, if someone's ripping you off, just tell them to fuck off and offer them something which you think's the fair a fair amount. And if they won't accept it, say, well, well especially it's that, as greed up front, because I've heard this as well. It's that where, where people are agreeing yeah. a price up front, and then they say, oh no, actually, it's you know, it's it's X. Well, you know, I didn't include the rip off tax. Yeah. They include the mug tax of 280 plus VAT. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's £20 pound for the ride, yeah. Five minutes down the road. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there very glad that I don't live in a in a barter in a barter based society. It's the Neil and Chris in their state in the obvious <laughs> section of the podcast. <laughs> what passes for wisdom are us Well, I don't like when I was younger. Yeah, when I was younger, no, I yeah, found yeah. stuff like that. It's really uncomfortable. Well, it's really uncomfortable. Quid, but yeah, no, you, yeah, you do. And, and they you were don't. trying, and basically they were just trying to intimidate the money out of me because they surrounded me, and I was like, "Yeah, but you're surrounded me, and you're all a foot shorter than me, so fuck off." Well, no, there's the thing as well. It's kind of like as you say you, that you feel that's a sort of pressure that oh, I'm, I don't want to make a fuss and everything else. But actually, if somebody is just yeah, make a fuss, you know, lot, if they're, if they're being completely dishonest, yeah, yeah. Mind you, easy. Not not everyone, I guess, is you know be difficult for people with different, yeah. uh, you know. Well, then under those don't... circumstances, I would suggest just don't do anything ever. Just don't try anything. Don't try anything which doesn't have a price on it on the label. We'll, we'll agree things up front and, and say no. We'll do do as I say. My, my usual thing, just refuse. It's, it's, a, it's a high pressure situation. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. No, I can imagine. Well, that was more compelling than the intro to Carl story. It's not finished I still can't yet. Pronounce his name. No. Well, he's grinned at two people thus far. He's well, scared he keeps a couple coming of young back. lads from New Jersey. He keeps coming back. He's continuously involved in Mothman prophecy. Was he pretending to be a journalist? I didn't quite. Someone was. Someone was. It might have been Indrid Cole. Might have been. Bold. I don't know I'm struggling. I'm struggling with his name. It's a tricky one. It's a tongue twister for me. Yeah, I mean, that's Cole. why I chose it. Yeah, it's make me look even steeper than normal. That's exactly it, really. Nice. Yep, tricks of the trade. Yeah, Someone who's going to be feeling less stupid after they're collecting a load of skid money. <laughs> so, um, it's difficult to tell if it really happened, said Brian Dunning, author of Skeptoid magazine. Oh, I see. You should have like that. He's bound to be, yeah. But it's clear that Derenberg uh, gained nothing from coming forward. Yeah, well, maybe he tried to. I mean, again, who, it doesn't... Who knows... Who knows what actually happened to Derenberger on that strange night, Dunning said. I love this kind of false equivalency argument, though. It's just kind of like, well, if I'm weighing up the balancing of creatures from another planet visiting him or he made it all up, I'm sorry, one of them requires a much heavier burden of proof. Oh, no, it's, it's not, not a 50-50 scenario, do you know what I mean? But Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. toss of a coin. Yeah. Derenberger's story did little for him. him. You don't know any better than I do. His story did little for him. His obsession with it cost him his job and his wife. And according to Keel, who visited him a year later, they found him hiding behind drawn curtains from what he believed were hundreds of UFO believers and sceptics. So, I mean, it could just be a really good way of getting out of your job and marriage that you hate. <laughs> yeah, you know, be considered sort of like, um, you know, fake in a, his own considered death. Considered affair, but, just, but yeah. he was really ugly. Yeah, nobody was interested, so uh, we can so, yeah, make up a so, lot of stories about a grinning man. Gr- grinning man, isn't it? It's the only way out. Saying that, Indrid Cold and top his top friends... Tip, everyone. <laughs> top tip. Yeah, don't pretend you've canoed off to... Yeah, exactly. to the canoe if accident looking, and then did end yeah, up you're looking the at getting out page, of, yeah. looking at out of your job. If you're bored with your life, basically, then um, just uh, pr- pretend to be constantly... Contacted by aliens, so he wouldn't take off these days, though, would it? Because in those no. days, like news was slow; there wasn't much going on. Was these days? It's, well, now know. it's like there's Senate committees about UFOs now, so yeah. you know you, you won't get you won't get heard above that. Um, so saying that, Indrid Colt and his friends frequently visited the farm, often arriving by automobile for long, friendly chats. Okay, he's got a car now. That's he had a bit almost better. certainly become delusional. So maybe the initial visit was real. 
Yeah. But then he felt he was keep coming back because he'd just been speech so much. Yeah, and it's like you know, his life was falling apart. He was getting yeah. banging headaches, getting blinders behind the eyes. Yeah. Oh, God. It's definitely not that meth habit. <laughs> definitely not. Uh, uh, right. Uh, rural areas are always the best places for a creepy tale, he said. It's darker, there are trees and murky creeks. And if you're far from the comforting protection of lights and people. So uh, we are now going to talk about the third sighting. Okay. I'm just going to see if I can get a better article on this. No, I can't. So it's very short. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, okay, no, this is... Um, so this is... The third sighting is what I mentioned earlier about the Mothman stuff. So during the same period in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the Lilly family had been reporting poltergeist activity in their home, such as diamond-shaped lights. The Lily's daughter, Linda, was sleeping one night and awoke to see a man standing over her. Ooh. It was a man, a big man. <laughs> big man. Very broad. I couldn't see his face very well, but I could see that he was grinning at me. He walked around the bed and stood right over me. I screamed again and hid under the covers. When I looked again, it was gone. So that's from a child, so yeah, ignore. Fair enough. Explanations. It is commonly believed that Indrid may have been an alien entity, and this is supported by his close connection with UFO activity and with the Derenberger sighting. It is also said by Derenberger that the grinning man is, in fact, a species of alien with multiple grinning men. However, this is unlikely unless the aliens are shapeshifters, because it would be almost impossible for a race to take the exact evolutionary path as us. That's why it's unlikely. Okay, that's the only reason. Yeah, he's logic to out. He sleuthed that out. Found, that. The, found the loophole. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> if the gloves don't fit, you have to, you have to quit. I mean, you do have a thing. I think it's called convergent evolution. But uh, yeah, but I'm like, not sure. Multiple you branches. Can... You can develop wings, yeah. for example. But yeah, maybe not. There's a. Uh... Well, I don't know if that's like I. I'm not sure. I mean that. Could be the case on Earth with its particular <clears throat> gravity and air pressure and mix well, of no, gases. It could be. It could be within our universe that bipedal organisms that look human humanoid are actually a favoured. There's um, every. Well, I don't know. I think you're getting a bit Star Trek on me. However, the third sighting by you the just Lily... a bit of a Cornish pasty on your forehead. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the cost of makeup. Was... The thing is, as well, you look at the Klingons, and that was actually the more advanced ones originally. Just like it was. Um, Point yeah, years. It was just kind of like a little bit of um green paint. Well no, um lead paint. Yeah. It was it was paint, but it wasn't green paint, if you know what I mean. But anyway. So yeah. however, the third sighting by the Lily family suggests and paint instead... on moustache and those glue on moustaches, which was good. Anyway. <laughs> I like Star Trek. However, the third sighting by the Lily family suggests instead that it may be a ghost or spirit of some kind and was connected with the poltergeist activity happening in the residence. It may be a prank that went too far. Or a man with a mental illness. Others believe that it's a normal human man or a hoax based off the popularity and fear of the Mothman who had first been sighted around the same time. Torna Devenberger mentions in her book that Indrid Cold may also be known as Valiant Thor. He spent three years at the Pentagon. Valiant Thor? Yeah. So, three... uh, I mean, let's have a look what that is. I think I'm seeing where, um, uh, what's his face, got a Ford, P- Ford Prefect from, and Douglas but, Adams. So Valiant Thor uh, was apparently... That's a good name. It's much better than Ingrid Cold. Ingrid Cold really forgettable. Valiant Thor. Was apparently an alien that lived at the Pentagon. So he didn't actually work for the Pentagon. Well, he might have worked there. Lived and worked. 
might have been like a might have worked, lived and worked in his office like a tech guy. There's also um so he met up with uh, President Eisenhower in the Pentagon, deep within the Pentagon, apparently. Deep. Yeah. So in the in the garden bit in the middle. He's been on the Chiluminati podcast. See, that's a clever name, Chris. Chiluminati, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's not as good as Urbane Legends. Valiant Thought Part One. See, though? Yeah, but maybe maybe give that a listen, eh, to this. See, I may manage to drag an hour's worth of material out of this touch. So, well, men after our own hearts. So, um, that's it for uh, Indrid. Well, I mean, that's, that's the girl. Yeah. So, so three sightings. Mm. Interesting because next week's story's got three sightings as well. We'll see how they compare. But um, it's good, isn't it? A triptych, a triptych of sightings. I was expecting more. You were expecting um, more. Well, no, just because this is. Have you listened to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> was it bit more from us? No, no. Um, to the injured, well, it's a bit like the Mothman prophecies thing. You know, it's just there's just nothing to it really. Um, and that well, film. I mean, the guy... No, 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 but I, just, I was just always expecting there to be, like, a bit of a cottage industry of this thing being around, you know, like, oh, and there's another one in the 80s, and there were a load of sightings in the 70s, or or made-up ones, do you know what I mean? But it's just, no, it seems to have pretty much... He's so... in a chain-link fence in New Jersey, and yeah. then this one guy, obviously, sort of sounded like it wrecks his life, so that's kind of spooky. And, and then, what was the other one? It was just related to the Mothman, wasn't it? it was kind yeah, of, the, um... the daughter thought she I saw... like the franchise building. Cross like that. Yeah, yeah, that's nice good. That. That's good. That's a nice touch. cinematic universe. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's make that happen. Lovely. So shall we go through our scoring system? Do you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Neil, spookiness. Go ahead. Yeah, there is, I guess, something um, spooky. It's that kind of thing, isn't it, where you, you expect a, a, a smile to be kind of like a, something, you know, friendly, implicating, or, you know, warm, but uh, not, you know, if it's not, like Uncanny Valley. Not if you're a chimp. Yeah, a chimp or a hyena or something. And it sort of crosses over into, or, or me, when I grin at you. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, a chimp. Yeah. Giving, giving you a bit chimp of the um, <laughs> Giving you a glad. That's terrifying. The glad grin. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and... Cause I, well, I suppose what I quite like about this as well, so, you, you know, when, you know, when you just get the sort of little green men or the greys or something like that, and it, it, you know, there's no real... I think we did one, wasn't it, where there was a bit of a shootout. I mean, that was quite fun that there was a shootout involved, but there was... Um, that was the Hopkins Goblins. Yeah. Hopkinsville Goblins. Um, I mean, there was more evidence of that case. But, yeah, no, the, the idea that sort of something comes along... So, I guess he's... he's tell, was Because most of it's all coming... So, you've got, you've got the third one, which feels very like one that we've covered in the past, where it's the kind of like... Uh, we can go over all this ground again, but the... Um, I can't remember what you call it now. But you Bleak know, paralysis. Bleak paralysis, thank you. Um, and, you know, you, you sort of imagine things on the side of your bed. Well, that sounds very much like those kind of cases. Mm-hmm. That, you know, we've done various stories um, that, that sound like they could be in that camp. The ones in New Jersey, kind of like, I mean, it's just a creepy guy. But, yeah, I mean, the second story, I mean, he's that's the best one. Well, that's the, best the one. main one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the star. So, and it, it's really this guy's life. And there's all the little details like, the, you know, the eerie grin, the, the jacket, the fact that he was clearly riding some uncanny vehicle and... Weirdly enough, I think the worst part is that he's just kind of like you know, the thing about his hands up in his armpits. I don't okay, know. Okay, guys. Yeah. Okay, like he's guys. Trying to so what are we impersonate a human being? So what are we? What are we trying to achieve from the meeting today? Yeah, let me, let me teach you some secrets of NLP. I, I mean, I've definitely met some consultants who sound very like this. To be honest with you, uncanny smile, yeah. eerie body language. I mean, it sounds like. Yeah, we're, we're not here. Of the consultants we're not, we're not here to hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um. <laughs> so yeah, I think it, it is quite spooky. Um, you know the whole telepathic thing. It's you know, I think it's that intrinsic thing, isn't it? You don't know, even though they're saying it's nothing to be scared of. It's that someone who's, you know, maybe crossed the galaxy to to uh, you know, and you don't know what power they've got, what have you, to find out. To find, yeah. to find out if Petersburg is the only is where all the humans live. Exactly. Yeah. They're just something you know. You don't know. You know what they might be capable of. Done or what their they, homework. What, what, they, what their gain is. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. If if were it to happen, so yeah. You would, I think, you would think if you were flying down to Earth, you've done some basic research. 
Well, you would also think that you would see that there were much bigger settlements lit up, like yeah, I mean, New York. <laughs> you know, you could probably do, you probably use the instrumentation to do various things. Well, no, you things could just see it, can't yeah, you? Yeah, more like heat mapping and stuff like that, couldn't you? Just... Or just the lights being on yeah. if you're coming in at well, night. Yeah. That's true. Um, or maybe maybe you avoided the really built up areas. You know, you it's the spookiest bit that these the spookiest bits that these are the world's most stupid aliens who fly well, around to, is... fly around in a big lamp. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not able to recognise cities and stuff. Yeah, just go, oh, that's probably rivers reflecting. No, exactly. Some gang, gang of intergalactic morons. Um, they have the technology; <laughs> they don't really know how to use it. Uh, the brighter people stay away from Earth. Um, yeah, but no, quite speaking, I'm going to give it a seven. Seven. Okay. Um, Around that little second. Up. So, yeah, I think it's... It, well, it's countryside, middle of nowhere. Like, the, you know, you've, if you're knackered from selling all your sewing machines. You know, one of them's got loose in the back. Oh, oh God. Nightmare. Ugh, just, down, want just want to get home, yeah, right, put that back in. Oh, God, there's a police head of me, I better pull over. Oh, wait a minute, it's a flying lamp, and some consultant's coming out going, hi, guy. <laughs> this hi, is the pyramid what, scheme, yeah? <laughs> hi, what is human? <laughs> um, but, yeah, telepathically and stuff. Like, it would, yeah, it is spooky enough, isn't it? Yeah, and that uncanny valley thing. So, yeah, I'll go with you and give it a seven. So, believability. Um, I mean, this guy, I think... I think he. I don't. It doesn't feel like a a hoax or a money making thing to me. I think he saw something. Maybe. Um, I think he. Does he believe it? It's that, or is it just a lie that he doesn't want to retreat back from? But, I mean, yeah, but you're digging right in, aren't you? That probably, you know, fury goes big enough. Um, but I think people do potentially believe believe it i mean there's a lot of books about it and podcasts and all kinds of stuff like it's actually one with a fuckload of podcasts about it better than this i would imagine um so um yeah um it's humanoid there's a uh, i don't know there's not anything particularly super i don't know i'm just gonna i'm gonna give it a five he's an alien yeah but aliens could exist fair enough um yeah, it's kind of like, it's, again, it's one of those ones where do I believe it's true? No, not at all. Um, do other people, you know, do some people believe it's true? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of people who believe in, you know, life from other places. And I, I like the fact it's got a bit more personality. It's a bit eerie, as I've been saying. That's, mm. You know, maybe that's give people a bit, bit more something to uh, to cling on to. But um, uh, as to whether or not this person, well, I mean, only, he, only they knew. I assume they're no longer with us. I don't know. No. Um, but 1990. They, uh, 1990 passed away in his 70s. Um so yeah, only they will know whether or not they they thought they saw what they saw. Um, and yeah, it's possible they thought they saw it. Well, yeah, they don't believe it actually happened. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I think you're right. You know, there will be people who buy into this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it a six actually on that basis. Okay, narrative premise. Um, it's one of those ones where, it, it, on the surface, you feel like you've got a bit more going on, but going on. I'm still annoyed about watching that Mothman Prophecies movie. So I don't, it's just, it, it's <laughs> tangential stuff. Like, I mean, you know, you've got the idea of the grinning man and all the rest of it, but it's just, it's not really, there's not a lot there. I mean, there, there are some, there's some interesting specifics. Like it's got a weird name and like Indrid Cold. Like, yeah, you know, on the face of it, it doesn't sound, you know, it doesn't sound that weird, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's like quite I mean, hard to pronounce. It's a bit, there's, there's some cool uncanny bits to it, but there's not a lot not a lot you can do with this i mean he's you know it's an alien who grins and has a weird name and they yeah. seem to have added in a load of superfluous facts about him living on some planet of whatever and yeah i don't know where they're getting all that well all those what facts the the stuff guy? you're quoting from i mean they haven't you know it's it's being featured in a movie and some stories and things so there's clearly something there but i don't think there's an awful lot so i mean it's going to be a four from me Okay, um, so I think it's more than a four because I mean it's been a few. I don't, there's a fair amount you can do with it, um, uh, and the protagonist is decent. Um, you know, it could almost be 
like body snatchery or like kind of watchers from another dimension, you know, that kind of thing. Who knows? Um, but yeah, um, so I'm trying to find the name. There was a two others with different name, wasn't there? Oh, I can't find it now. Um, oh, Valiant Fool was one of them. No, that was potentially what he's been linked to. Mm-hmm. So there's a different one. There was like one called Hassan something, and I was just thinking, well, they just sound like people, like just tourists. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, um, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I quite like the premise, but but the reality of it is it doesn't really go anywhere. No, exactly. So what did you give it for? Yeah. Um, it's a decent character. You could do more with it, and you could have, like, these, you know, you could do sort of a, a show around sort of a rural area and these mm. kind of uh, grinning men or whatever or turn up and stuff. So I'm going to give it a five. Um, reach. There you go, Chris. That's your side hustle. That's my side hustle. You do a mid, mid, mid-witch cuckoos for the 2023. <laughs> Grinning then. So, Reach, um, well, you've heard of it, so hi. Um, but you've seen the Mothman film, so low. Yeah, I think that's where I heard it from. Um, yeah. I don't know. There, there's a fair amount about it on the internet and stuff. I hadn't really heard of it before that I can think of, but possibly have. Do you know what I mean? But it's not from. And when you mentioned Mothman as well, if you just said Indrid Cold, I'd be like, oh, that sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm yeah. not really sure. But when you mentioned Mothman, I was like, oh, yeah, I vaguely recall that. that but there's been a book, and it's, um, I don't know, yeah. it seems to have been in a fair bit of media considering. Yeah, no, to be fair, I think this has gone around a bit. So I'm going gonna... to made a movie out of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm going to go down a bit longer, give it a five now. Yeah, probably fairly similar logic, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't know whether this is one of the more popular ones or not. It just, um, but yeah, it does seem to, yeah, as I say, well, film made out of it. Don't know if it's been an episode of Supernatural. I assume not. Or they, are they more like devils and things? Do they do aliens? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I'll give it I'll give it a five. Okay, and it gives an overall score of 44. <laughs> not too so, bad. Yeah, not too bad. So. A bit of something. Yeah, it's something there, wasn't there? We've looked at it now. Well, Move on with our again. lives. Yeah. Beautiful. Maybe one day we'll do the Mothman properly. Or yeah. Or Mothman or whatever. I think that needs a bit of research to make it I good. I try and find something worth. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's a podcast which so I sometimes that, listen that, to called case. the Cryptonauts podcast, and they found enough stuff to do four episodes, four one-hour episodes on it, so there's obviously oh, I admire, I admire their grit. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And bother um, them to do research. Yeah, they do it. Yeah, well, let's take a more off the cuff approach to research. Yeah, it's more like an it's more kind of an, an unboxing style yeah. of paranormal research. Yeah, we're like an unboxing video, aren't we? Yeah, very much so. That kind not of quite sure why you've decided to watch that on YouTube, but then you can't. can't. Something between an unboxing video and a car accident, then you can't. Or a reaction, or a reaction video yeah. to to a new pop song. Yeah, by. I don't know. We should do a Taylor Swift. I, I guarantee this has already happened, but we should do a YouTube channel where we react to reaction videos. Yeah, it's probably already happened. Yeah, some, done it and some smart ass has already done that. Like five seconds after. We should do. Uh, we should do a YouTube channel where we react to our own podcasts. <laughs> Just constantly criticise yeah. it. Yeah. Um, podcast. Yeah, say how full of our analysis we can crawl with this. <laughs> yeah, love podcast it. And do about a video the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for this week. I'm not going to go through the uh, socials and stuff because I can't be bothered and no one looks at it anyway. Yeah. And, uh, point is, uh, it's, all, it's, yeah. it's out there on X somewhere. Just have a look. Um, yeah. So I hope you all have X a lovely fucking. week and uh, we'll see you soon. Goodbye. And goodbye. 